I often used to have pneumonia, bronchitis and other respiratory tract inflammations. Frequent inflammatory conditions lasted until I was five. My parents did not know what was going on, what was happening with me because the main symptom was an agonizing abdominal pain and fever. I had a temperature of over 40 degrees. I ended up in the district hospital where they told me I had appendicitis. When my abdomen was opened, they saw I was healthy. So my parents spent all their money and had to borrow some, and now they're in debt. And still no one knew what was wrong with me. After spending three months in hospital, I ended up in the clinic in Poznań, in Spitalna Street. Then they sent me to the Child Health Care Centre in Warsaw, where I was diagnosed with primary immunodeficiency. The consequence of the absence of the early diagnosis is chronic cystitis and bronchitis. These are two main concomitant diseases. Generally, I have to take a permanent antibiotic for almost a year. My main therapy includes antibody infusions, which I have every three or four weeks. Which involves a two day stay in hospital, which in a way makes my life a little bit difficult. I didn't want to be seen from the angle of the fact that I am ill. It was extremely important for me. It resulted in a bit from my complexes, but I wanted to be normal. My time at studies and secondary school as well went quite smoothly without any major health problems. The problem started last year in October when I got various infections that went on for a long time. Antibiotic therapies weren't effective. I ended up with myocarditis and then somehow I had a bit of a problem. They simply wanted to expel me. Problems with my attendance. It was below 30%. However, I pulled myself together and passed my exams and did the best as I could. This was an impulsive for further actions, for community actions. I had subcutaneous administration for six months and it was really good. I wasn't ill much and the results were good. I've tried intravenous infusions and the difference is great. Mainly, there is no risk that the dosage I will receive is insufficient. My disease, primarily the fact that it wasn't diagnosed earlier, meant that I didn't really have any normal childhood. I was often in hospital or had to stay at home. I didn't have any contact with my peers. I developed a series of different complexes and phobias which dragged on for years. In addition, when I looked for my own way in life, I used to be rejected too. I was told I would die before turning 40. I heard this many times. They wanted to pigeonhole me put me in boxes and label me, ill, disabled, useless. He won't manage his tasks, he won't make it. It is only recently that I have found out that the disease is an integral part of me. To understand this, it is very important, but also very difficult to achieve. If we can do it, then we can live for real. It's a big thing. I want to say that we, that is, the primary immunodeficiency patients, can live a normal life because we are normal people. Disease or disability is the state of your body, not your mind.